G'day Stuart, Lily. Thanks for the uh, invitation uh, to respond to your video and great to see you using YouTube to uh, put a call out for suggestions on, on how the university might go about its marketing. Uh, a couple of things spring to mind just in your message alone. Uh, one, you know, it was a well-produced uh, message. You obviously used a uh, quality camera, thought about your lighting, uh, your costume, and what you were going to say. But I think it, when you're using or thinking about using the social internet, by that I mean YouTube, for example, um, I think you have to portray uh, a quality, but a message of authenticity. So when I watched the video, I was tempted to reach for my high quality camera, set it all up nicely with better lighting, wear a proper shirt, uh, just to equal the um, images in your message. But then I decided, no, no, I'm just going to use the webcam like everyone else has got on their computer and uh, this cheap headset. And I think this is the other extreme. Poor quality image, probably poor quality sound, and uh, not sure what it's conveying in terms of the background and the t-shirt and things like this, but what I'm trying to point out is something to do with authenticity. More information or thinking about that, uh, the Clue Train Manifesto. Clue Train Manifesto. You know, it, it, it's a bit of a seminal text for online marketing and it foresaw the social internet that we have now and that being a read-write internet in that anyone can write to the internet, anyone can read to the internet, anyone with connectivity that is. Uh, and as a result the marketing message is much more a conversation and therefore the need for authenticity. Uh, Yes, I think if you were to go to the Clue Train Manifesto, read the reviews and all that around it, I think it would stimulate some thinking about, some critical thinking about the messages that marketing in all universities typically put out and hopefully some ideas on alternative ways to put those messages out. Related to it, you use the word or you use the question, how can we market to... Uh, what was it, past, existing and potential or future students. And I think the group that you are sending your message to is far wider than students. It, you might call it the community, uh, certainly the local community. And that includes grandparents, uncles and aunties, parents, young children, and then the group, the from young adults through to uh, practicing professionals, that group you might imagine as students, but I think your messages have to be targeted or relevant and appealing to everyone, not just students. And that relates to the authenticity again. And you just think about, I don't know, a family around the dinner table and uh, an 18 year old in the family is considering going to university and the conversation comes up, which university? probably what course and if your messages have been consistently pitched with authenticity and gifting value to everyone at that table at some point in time then hopefully everyone in that table is going to be thinking about the University of Canberra. Um, I think they're the main points I wanted to make in response to your video. As you know I've made a proposal that marketing needs to link with educational development. Educational development in this sense being the production of educational media. And so marketing and the library and at the present unit called the Teaching and Learning Centre probably need to come together some more and form a production team that is able to not only search and monitor the internet for material that is reusable for educational purposes here at the university now. So uh, finding videos that are relevant to James Neal's psychology classes or um, finding open textbooks for any other course 
and helping teachers understand how to use that material. And then once, uh, once a picture has been grasped of what is available on the internet for certain types of subjects with your help, then we fill the gaps. What is missing uh, in the internet at this moment, at this, on this day, and we'll produce media to fill that gap and gift it to the wider community, the international community that uses the internet. And we'll use authenticity and we'll gift it in such a way that it's valuable to everyone possibly in the community. Uh, so that relates to the idea of open educational resources or open education practices. At the moment, uh, the vast majority of our educational uh, services are hidden from that wider community, the wider public. You require a username and password to see the quality or lack thereof of our teaching practices, teaching and assessment practices. You have to first enroll as a student committed to the debt and everything else uh, before you're given that username and password. I think we have to invert that practice and as much as possible help to filter the internet for people interested in the subjects that we are teaching at the moment. So finding the good material, bringing it out to the front through us and producing uh, supplementary material that is not on the internet at the moment and putting it out for reuse. Uh, that includes copyrights to reuse uh, for anyone, other universities, um, anyone out on the internet. And I think that has what you're interested in, the marketing potential. At the moment, you might spend, I don't know, ten, twenty thousand dollars on a billboard campaign in local Canberra. Um, now that billboard has a logo, it has the name University of Canberra, it has some visual motif behind it, uh, usually some metaphor or analogy about studying at University of Canberra, and a phone number or a website link. Uh, that's pretty minimal information. Now, if you were to take an educational development approach to the billboard, I don't know, if the billboard's situated on uh, Ginandera Drive, then the billboard might in fact be an educational device for the location it's in. It, it might be something to do with, um, I don't know, uh, some historical event that happened in this space or um, further historical, the, the, the way of indigenous communities pre-European pre, uh, settlement. Um, or if you think about the advertising in uh, toilet blocks, public toilet blocks, you know, that really crass advertising you get at urinals and toilets, it, they might be educational and telling you all about your digestive tract. Or um, uh, I've seen one at the Museum of Otago in Dunedin. Their, their posters were called The Fart Facts, and it was telling you how, what farts they are and what they work and stuff like that, how they work and things or urinary tract and, um, and stuff like that. So you're taking that pretty basic branding message, which is just a billboard with a logo and a phone number, and you're putting more content into it that represents us as education, research, knowledge, uh, interested in the well-being of our community, uh, interested in the well-being of the international community as well. So that billboard example that scales across newspaper ads, radio ads, television ads, television ads that also happen to be on YouTube, um, recorded lectures, um, preferably not hour-long lectures, but maybe a 10-minute interview with the lecturer to su summarise. It, really, it's up to you to think creatively about that proposal. So linking your marketing uh, campaigns, which are primarily branding, websites, although no, not websites so much these days for you guys, uh, and your international representations, linking them with educational development. I think that's, that's all. I've got a lot of ideas on how that could be done, but that's really, I think, what I wanted to put to you guys in your retreat is to talk about that challenge of how you'd link your work to educational outcomes uh, or educational media that have an authentic voice and image that are communicating to the wider community, not just this idea of students. Yeah. 
I think that's about it. Let's see how this goes. I'll have to rewatch it and hopefully not have to add anything else to it or do another cut.